<laughs> Let's jump into it. Hey friends, Simi, welcome back to a video on Giz Audio. And uh, sorry for a little bit of wailing at the beginning there. I am a little bit tired and a little bit out of it, but I have enough energy to review or a rant about the Moon Drop Joker. The Moon Drop Joker, before we even jump into sound, let's touch on build quality really quickly. This thing is built like something you would get at like Toys R Us. It is very um, plasticky, clackly, and it's overall just doesn't feel premium at all. But the price is $79, so maybe I'm complaining too much here. It's lightweight, it's plastic, it just feels overall inexpensive. Now, the cable is pretty much the only thing that I like build-wise and accessory-wise because the cable is actually really nice. And despite being fabric, you won't have any issues with microphonics unless you're really like moving the cable, uh, rubbing it against your shirt. If you're just sitting regularly, they won't have any microphonics at all, which is really nice. Fit and comfort wise, since they're super light, they are actually very comfortable and they seal quite well, at least for my head. I can't speak for people who with glasses, of course, because I don't wear glasses. For me, I can wear these all day. They don't feel heavy or annoying or anything like that at all. They're just uber comfortable. And the cups are very plush as well. They can get a little hot. I think that might be the only nitpick, but all in all, I had no issues wearing it for an entire day. On to the most important aspect of this. Well, one more thing about the build. I don't like that it's not foldable. Yes, I read in the comments someone said if you add foldable components or foldable hinges, it adds another failure point. I get it, I understand, but for me, if I'm gonna buy a clothes back and this inexpensive as well, I would want to take it traveling with me. That would be one of the criteria, at least for me. For you guys, it might not be, but for me, I wish it was foldable in a smaller form factor that I can take with me. I'm kind of gutted that it's not like that. But beyond that, the sound quality, this thing is bad. These sound thin lifeless. They're sibilant and also at the same time just limped all together in the base. So there's no quality that I like about these so far. The only good thing I can pick out if you want to call it a good thing is due to how it's tuned, how the upper mid range is the main focus, you will feel like the vocals are well detached from the rest of the music, giving you that good sense of imaging, if you will, but it comes at a cost of not being natural at all. Vocals are very thin, lacking natural weight or heft or richness to the voices. Instruments sound overly sharpened and artificial as well. And bass, again, is just limp. And for a pair of closed back headphones, not having good bass is like, inexcusable <laughs> in my personal opinion. If you don't want bass or you want very reduced bass, just go for like an open back or something. Or you know, maybe you do want less bass in a closed back, that's entirely up to you. But for me, it should have more bass. Or more correctly, they could have reduced the upper mid range by quite a bit to allow the bass to shine a bit more. Next, let's move on to technical performance and I would put the Moondrop Joker right next to the Moondrop Void. It has a couple things going for it. Number one, the artificial imaging and number two, the micro details and details in the treble. What it's missing is details in the lower ranges, lower mid range and bass pretty much sounds like they're missing information or just too much in the background. There's no note weight and also the bass lacks any authority or distinction. So yeah, around the Moondrop Void. Next section is usually where I compare the Moondrop Joker to other products that I've tried, but honestly, I haven't tried way too many headphones around this price, like under $100. There's really not that many of them under this price that is good or that a lot of people recommend anyways. So for $80, do I recommend this as a product? I would say 
If you like the tuning, then sure, everything else about it is fine. The build quality is not good, but it is inexpensive, so I'm not gonna complain again too much about that. It's comfortable to wear. The design looks nice. If you like the tuning, why not? It's not that expensive. But for me, I can't stand the tuning. And if you're someone who have a taste or preference that is aligned with mine or closely related to my taste, then I can't recommend this pair of headphones. And for that, I'm gonna give the Moondrop Joker an orange. Not a total red, it's not a complete disaster, but an orange thumb. I don't recommend it personally based on my own preference, but you know, to each their own. Someone might like this one. All right, that's it for this review and rant of the Moondrop Joker. Now, it does come across like I don't like Moondrop a little bit in this video, but I'm a huge Moondrop fan, you know? Like you saw in the last video, I own pretty much a lot of Moondrop IEMs. I also own the Void and the Venus, and I like the Void and the Venus as well. So this is just a case where Moondrop just kind of bombed it like it is like the starfield 2 is and the stellaris just one of those products that didn't do well for me with that all being said thank you again for watching all the way to the end i'll see you guys in the next video peace out bye <laughs>